Argentina and Australia, folks, their second game in the Rugby Championship. Aussies got a pretty good bonus point come from behind win last week. Their injury list goes on, but we'll go through the lineups, some prediction stats, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on this one as well. It's the second game of the weekend. It's like a 4-10 kickoff time over in uh, Argentina, so it's an afternoon game. And uh, for those of us in Australia and New Zealand, it's morning especially early for you guys in australia but yeah 41 26 last week really good win for the wallabies the pumas threw away or surrendered or were just beaten to the game because i mean nine point lead i think it was at half time and then the final 20 minutes for the wallabies they absolutely put the hammer down um i think they scored more than half their points in that final 20 but anyway we'll get to the stats in a minute for argentina they have made a few changes michael checker in his uh Press conference kind of mentioned a little bit about rotation. Some things are tactical. Uh, some things are more like about guys who've been training well and just getting a reward. But the uh, the front row has just got the one change. Gajo comes in um, to the loose head, and he's alongside Montoya and Cordella, who say the same as last week. Gajo is one of those guys he mentioned that was um, you know training really well with the scrum, and they see the scrum is going to be one of the most important factors of the game. And Cheka has been saying that since before their first game against Scotland, that basically he sees the keys to success with its Argentinian side in terms of being competitive as they've got to get the fundamentals right, which is ruck, maul, scrum, like the, the really, fr, uh, you know, the, the ball securing stuff, which maybe they didn't quite get that right last week, especially at maul time. But anyway, Alamado and Lavanini is the same lock and duo, Gonzalez, Crema and Matera, the same back row. And that back row got through a lot of tackles last week. I mean, Matera scored and created a try, but collectively, the three of them, I think, got through, well, I don't know what chunk of the tackles, but each of them was in double figures in terms of how much work they got through. So really busy from the back row. Bertrand comes in at nine. He wasn't in the 23 last week, so he takes Kubeli's spot. Kubeli drops to the bench. And uh, he's another one that was kind of mentioned by name by Michael Checker in the press conference as having trained particularly well. Remember, he did well in the Scottish series as well, so it's a good reward for him. Carreras is still there at 10. Sanchez... After sustaining that kind of second injury, he's actually traveled back to France. So I think he's um, he's kind of written off for, for the Rugby Championship. It was unfortunate for him, but a good chance for Carreras to get more game time in the number 10 jersey. De La Fuente and Moroni are the midfield, so Moroni takes over from Orlando. And then uh, Bofelli, Imhoff, and Malia is a changed back three. Uh, Bofelli has swapped wings. He's on the right wing this week. Imhoff comes in on the left. And Malia, who was genuinely pretty dangerous when he did take the ball to the line last week on kick return, um, he continues on. So hopefully we'll get to see him back himself a little bit more because, as I said, he did get some good return from it. Bench-wise, Krivi, Tedes Chaparro, and Sklavi. Uh, so Tedes Chaparro is the guy who drops to the bench. Uh, Facundo Isa comes in on the bench uh, as well alongside Bruni. So it's a couple of kind of more... Loose forward replacements. Remember, we got Crema is there who can kind of fill in at lock if needs be. And then Cabelli, Albonoz, and Sinti, who's come into the 23, are there as your back replacements. So, um, yeah, it'll be uh, a big test for the Pumas guys. They're definitely going to need to play more for the 80. I think it was uh, in the Scottish series as well a theme that the second half tended to be when they surrendered. There's a big gust of wind going through my house. Uh, the second half is when they surrendered the, the lion's share of their points, so they really need to play for longer. Kind of simple as that. For the Wallabies, as I said, they'll be kind of pleased with how they came back from behind, but they won't be pleased with how extensive the injury list is getting. From the last game, uh, we've uh, lost Hunter Paisami, who's uh, got a bit of concussion from my understand. Uh, Al Alatoa is out for personal reasons. I think Matt Phillip has kind of just been dropped, but um, yeah, unless he's got an injury that I haven't heard of, I wouldn't be surprised. Remember, Quade Cooper injured himself, so the injury, his is long-term, so to join the already very extensive list, uh, if nothing else, they're building a lot of depth in Australia and still managed a bonus point win despite the injuries, so something's got to be going right. Uh, Slipper, Fainga, and Tupo are the front row, so Tupo gets a start. We did see him get the wood over Gajo, at least in one big scrum, so that may be an area they look to focus on. Arnold and Swain are the locks, so I mentioned Philip not being in the lineup. Rory Arnold is uh, one of the guys who's going to get a crack in the, um, in the, the lock and duo, but I mean... 
geez, their maul was already good enough without adding kind of a maul specialist like Rory Arnold to the to mix. Uh, Holloway, McCright, and uh, Valtini were a useful back row last week. Valtini with a ton of carries and uh, McCright with a ton of tackles. Jed Holloway was also useful at line-out time. So, yeah, pretty well balanced. And then uh, Nick White and James O'Connor are the 19 combo. So James O'Connor gets the nod ahead of Lola Seal. And apparently uh, Dave Reddy said James was going to get the nod um, pretty much no matter what because he's been looking sharp and he was not looking sharp in the England series so uh, we'll trust Dave's judgment on that one for Kitty comes in and Paisami spot at 12 uh, alongside Ikito and then Korombete, Pitaya and Wright is the same back three so at least that's one area where they're able to field the same uh, you know lineup without injuries and Korombete was another guy who got through a ton of tackles last week and uh, the three of them, the, the back three, seem to have a pretty good connection with each other. Like, they seem to be on the same page in terms of being in the right place at the right time. Uh, replacements, Lonergan Gibbon and Fa'a Musili. So Fa'a Musili has come into the 23. He's been in a Wallaby squad a couple of times, but never managed to get a cap. But he's finally going to get one. It's kind of uh, unfortunate that it's only because, maybe maybe only because of the extensive number of players missing from the lineup. But I reckon the guy's a good player. So, yeah, power to him. Congratulations to getting his Wallaby cap. Frost, Samu, continue on. And then uh, it's three backs on the bench this week for the Wallabies with McDermott uh, coming into the 23. Simone coming into the 23, which is an interesting call because, remember, he's off to France uh, very shortly. And then Reese Hodge continues on as well. So no spot for Lola Sio, no spot for Vunivalu. Um, but there is a spot for Simone, and there's just a bird that's taken off from the side of my house pretty loud. But... Um, yeah, changes. Changes for both sides. You wouldn't call any of them wholesale. Some of them are injury enforced and some of them are just, I guess, tactical. But yeah, stats wise, man, from last week, the mall, the mall is absolutely going to be key. I think the Wallabies scored three of their five from the mall last week, didn't they? So the Argentinians absolutely need to get that right. And 24 points coming in the final 20. When they only scored 41, I said only scored 41. That's more than half the points coming in the final quarter of the game. The Wallabies absolutely put the hammer down. And unfortunately for the Argentinians, they just didn't They didn't look at the races in that final 20. They finished with 32% territory, the Argentinians. And Czech is still not having them kick a lot. They kicked maybe too much under Ledesma, you feel, at times. But they're not kicking a lot under Checker. But maybe that's kind of him building... Uh, the foundation from the ground up. He did the same with the Waratahs. So we'll kind of have to see how they go. Um, the Waratahs, not the Waratahs, the Wallabies finished with 92% on the tackles, which is as a percentage is phenomenal. Um, both sides had really high penalty counts, but that might be partially due to Mike Adamson. He's a pretty whistle-happy ref compared to some others. For the Argentinians, one area which was good was the fact that they won so many turnovers. I know they had less possession, so more opportunities to win turnovers, but they won like seven. Which was, uh, which was pretty good, whereas the Wallabies, their ruck percentage at like 90 was um, was actually pretty low. Same as the All Blacks, and I remember the All Blacks were getting Malcolm Marks all through the game last week. So um, yeah, the breakdown may be one area they will like to assert themselves a wee bit. Carl Dixon is the ref for this one. Like I mentioned, it's an afternoon kickoff. Predictions-wise, it's the Wallabies by five points according to the rugby forecast algorithm and according to the bookies. So they can go into this one as big time favorites. The average score across the last five games is 26 to 16. So five points is um, maybe a little bit conservative, but the majority of those last five were all played in Australia. So yeah, the Argentinians do need to bounce back. If the Wallabies can go two from two away from home, they may set themselves up. I know everyone's talking up the Springboks as being pretty much unstoppable after one game, but I would not be writing off the Wallabies. Uh, if they can go two from two, like I mentioned, they'll put themselves in a really good position. But for the Pumas, they could certainly use a home win. You guys let me know your thoughts because they're going to head off to New Zealand next and uh, traditionally not been a really happy hunting ground. But yeah, if you want to watch these games, uh, Ripper Championships on Flow Sports in the States for you guys in the States. Uh, otherwise, just check your local providers. But yeah, link in the description for Flow if you guys are in the state, they're in the channel. Happy days, folks. Let me know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.